welcome to Mobility Mastery Monday. I'm Alicia and this is your weekly source for the best tips and tools for pain relief and feeling unstoppable. And today we are in part two of a three-part series on why flexibility or being flexible will not necessarily mean you have healthy fascia and having healthy fascia doesn't mean you'll have an increase in flexibility and how to achieve both if that's your goal. And that is the topic of today's video, how to achieve fascia release and increase your flexibility if you have both of those goals. Uh, so if you want to release fascia, you want to target your fascia in a global manner, because as we talked about in part one, you must target fascia according to its nature, and its nature is a vast crisscrossing matrix. It's global um, in the body. It connects everything, so to, to release it fully, it really needs to be targeted in a global manner. Um, now, I use this both with my private clients and teaching you here on Mobility Mastery um, how to do this by pinning a piece of fascia within a muscle group and then using movement to stretch it out. And that movement is what creates the 360 degree or global stretch or release for that fascia. So um, you can take that concept and apply it to any part of the body you want. If you want to release it, just think about pinning a piece of it and then using movement to get a full, let's say, range of motion. Now, if you want to increase your flexibility, uh, you have to target it very differently. And that is you have to target uh, usually flexibility linearly if you're talking muscle fibers. Now joints are gonna be a little bit different if you want to increase flexibility within a joint. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but basically, this means putting yourself into, you know, some kind of a stretch that's linear. So for example, just the obvious one, if you want to lengthen your hamstrings, you know, you need to do something like that where you're lengthening them. Now, I've said this quite a few places and I'll say it here again, I'm not a fan of static stretching. Um, and that is something like going into a stretch and just holding it. Um, the reason being, uh, for most people, I don't see it doing a lot of good. And for some people, it actually can injure them. Um, if you're super tight and you're stretching something um, aggressively, you could end up with a stretch reflex, a pulled muscle, something like that, or a tendon resisting the stretch, uh, a tendon or ligament, um, or the muscle fiber. Uh, so I generally don't recommend static stretching. Now, my favorite way of stretching is called PNF, or proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. Uh, and I'm gonna do a whole separate uh, post and video on that, so that is coming. Um, but uh, I also wanna talk about the fact that if you are a gymnast, a dancer, um, something like that, or the mom of one, or maybe you uh, are a dance teacher and you're trying to teach your kids how to become super flexible for whatever sport they're in, um, I just wanna take a moment to talk about that because I was a child gymnast and so I spent like hours and hours and hours in the splits <laughs> in various poses trying to gain flexibility. Um, those were static stretches for sure. We would just hold them and hold them and hold them and hold them. Um, and that kind of forces the body into um, hypermobility. And this is something you really can't change as an adult. So I'm hypermobile. I mean, like my shoulders can do things that most people can't. <laughs> um, I can go deep into a squat. Uh, so some of this is useful and some of it's not. Um, some of it's made me more prone to injury and some of it's actually useful for certain movements. So it's just something to become aware of. Um, so if your goal is you know, to become a hyper, super flexible gymnast or dancer, then you may have no choice but to actually do the static stretching to get there. It's kind of one of the only ways to like force yourself to become hypermobile. Um, but if your goal is to just become a little extra flexible for your daily life, then I definitely do not rec recommend static stretching. Um, I would recommend something like a PNF stretch. So you can use all the videos on Mobility Mastery, the YouTube channel here, and mobilitymastery.com to target your fascia for fascia release. Um, that's one way you can do it, or you can try to find somebody in your area who might do, let's say, myofascial release or something like that. Um, a few parting words though on other methods that I've heard claim can release or melt fascia uh, through something like, you know, like I know some people talk about, well isn't yoga good for your fascia or doesn't it lengthen fascia and I think there are some uh, modalities out there talking about uh, yoga being able to melt your fascia. I don't really think that this is possible. <laughs> um, I think that probably it does some good. But I don't really think it's going to, let's say, release the 
giant grapefruit sized knots in my quads if I go do a bunch of stretching like that or yoga poses. In fact, it might even make them tighten up more. So I just want to give you that distinction. Um, so if you're trying to target fascia, make sure it's a compression based, global movement based um, modality. That's been my experience as the most powerful way to do it. And if you want to increase your flexibility, um, again, just, you know, you have to use some kind of stretching to do that. And we're going to be talking about PNF stretching and dynamic warm-up type stretching um, in coming episodes, so stay tuned for those. And the very last episode in this three-part series will talk about the overlap and making sure you understand the distinctions of when you actually need to release fascia in certain areas to gain increase in uh, flexibility, um, and I'm using quotations here because it's usually something appears inflexible because it's your body trying to protect you, um, but it actually requires fascia release to get the range of motion back. So there's some overlap, it's kind of cool, really interesting info, and that'll be in the third episode. And if you found this useful and you liked it, then like it and share it, and for the full blog post, click the link below, and I'll see you next time on Mobility Mastery Monday.